I think I've always been an artist. Um, like I grew up surrounded by people who made things. I don't think I found out till much later that there were people who didn't make a lot of things because it was just kind of part of everyday life. I grew up down south, um, a great distance away from a lot of family in my community. And, and so Inuit art was always kind of a way um, to see that culture. So being an artist for me is really, really tied to being Inuit, um, to being an Inuk. We launched Temporary Contemporary at Sheridan, I think in 2012 was our first installation, our first instance of it. Um, I assembled a group of faculty members to really consider how do we engage in public art, how do we enhance our campuses, how do we make the work that our students do more manifest on campus, and how do we reach out to community. And it's actually our faculty who developed this whole idea of doing a temporary contemporary installation every year to develop a robust process of a, a call to the community, an adjudication process, a curatorial process that we did amongst ourselves. So we had many, many submissions. Uh, finally, Cousine's uh, submission really stood out heads and shoulders in terms of how he might fabricate it, how he understood the process to include students, and the partnership with Art Gallery of Mississauga. So the project is called Nitsit. Uh, it's a Inuktitut word um, for hooks. I did this series of, of fishing lures installed at the um, Creative Commons space at Sheridan. And um, it comes out of a body of other hunting and fishing implements that I've made, um, this time much larger. We're sitting here today in the exit room at the Art Gallery of Mississauga getting ready for the presentation of Casting Hooks, a partnership with Sheridan that supported Cuisine as an artist in residence, working with community groups, Sheridan students, and a variety of their facilities to realize a large-scale public installation of work. And an integral and very unusual portion in the context of traditional museum exhibitions or turning things on their head somewhat and presenting the front end of the exhibition, all of the work that a sculptor in this circumstance, Cuisine, engages in, in the quest for the final object. So here we see several of the final and realized pieces, but we are also quite privy to the narrative and beauty of the maquettes and the very early forms um, that participate in the conversation and evolution of Cousine's work. We had lures that were made of aluminum and, and wood and ceramics and um, working in a certain material gave me access into a different studio and I could work with a different group of students and explore a lot of different ways of making. And some of these materials were chosen because they look um, similar to other materials. For instance, the ceramic piece it looks a little bit like tooth or bone in this case, so I was able to use that in a historical example of a, a fishing lure that was carved out of a, probably a, a, t a tooth. We were really excited about the fact that Cuisine really connects historical practice with his contemporary context as well, so really exploring that idea of continuity of Indigenous identities, ways of knowing, especially in terms of thinking about process. That was something that was a really important part of the conversation early on when we were talking about doing this project with an Indigenous focus. Uh, in talking to our um, members of our Centre for Indigenous Learning and Support, one of the first things that came up was the idea of mentorship, the idea of um, connecting uh, the work at Sheridan, the work at the Art Gallery of Mississauga with a broader community. And so this was a really wonderful way to kind of expand the temporary contemporary project and connect it again with conversation around Indigenous arts. When I initially proposed this project, I, I had submitted uh, an image of, of six lures. Um, nearing the installation date, S seven of the lures looked good together and seemed like a good number that fit the space. So I chose those seven um, to complete and to install. Um, but there was a lot, of, a lot of different lures that are kind of still in progress or that didn't quite turn out or didn't feel as appropriate for, the, for this installation. 
And funny enough, the, the one that I really wanted to create never made it into the show because I wasn't happy with how it was turning out or um, it didn't have enough kind of successes to, to get it finished in time. Um, but this, this pattern um, is based on like a, a very common lure up north and one that I've used and one that people always recommend as a, as a good lure for catching the type of fish. So I, it seemed like the lure that um, I needed to work on it. It didn't necessarily have to be in the show, but um, working on it, it was one of my favorites to work on. This project can really add value to a contemporary landscape and art that we have in our society and it's so important that we reach out to First Nations, Inuit and Métis people to really get that different dialogue, those different narratives and to see a different perspective because we're so used to this sort of Eurocentric way of looking at art in galleries but is there a different way to look at art, is there a different way to foster conversations between people and we have to move beyond that narrative of thinking it's decorative art because a lot of our art that we have is really honed into our culture, our identity of who our people is, people is and it really speaks to who we are and it really gives that new sense of what Inuit art looks like and from our artists that we have it will showcase a different art that's normally not found in this area. We'll just add to the um, dialogue that we have at Sheridan. It's been really interesting to be connecting with people working in studios um, and seeing a work being produced. Um, I'm working with everybody from um, facilities, for example, who's talking with me about uh, how to install something up in a ceiling and what is involved there. Uh, to all the studio technologists are um, working with Cuisine and producing the work. Uh, seeing how he works with the technologists to figure out these new ways of making. The software was new to me, but it, it's what they had been using here, so I, I tried to pick it up as best as I could. But it starts with modeling the lure, and then from there we generate the toolpaths. And then we export that to a format that the machine can read and then the machine follows those directions and mills out our lure. I'm trying to make as big a lure as possible out of a couple of small pieces of wood. So I'm going to have to get a little bit creative um, with how I how I machine this. We've had some successful uh, patterns made up for the foundry, this being one of them. Um, and this was a bit of an experiment also, so this texture here was uh, kind of added in later, using some kind of creative settings on the machine. But this will go to the foundry and this will be cast in aluminum um, after it's cleaned up. I think this offers a really interesting insight for people to get some sense of what goes uh, into the process behind the scenes to create such a monumental installation. It's also a really um, interesting um, inside look at these objects that are both you know, so everyday um, and quotidian, but also in the Sheridan installation, so monumental, the fishing lures, which a lot of people have associations with. It's interesting specifically because he's bringing these lures from a uh, tradition of um, Inuit uh, carving and making and traditional hunting and fishing practices, but at the same time these works are connecting with people um, who you know, grew up in southern Ontario where he's now based and have spent time at, in cottage country going fishing and have a similar connection with these objects as being something very much uh, embodied with a sense of nostalgia and and story and connection. And casting Hooks also offers a really interesting opportunity for visitors to get an up-close look at these pieces that are, while beautiful, inaccessible at the Sheridan space, that you have to look up and see them, which presents a beautiful image. Um, as Cuisine describes, you, uh, as a viewer of the space in Sheridan, you are as though a fish underwater looking up at the lure um, that's being cast. 
Uh, but here in the AGM space, people get to get up close and personal with these large scale sculptural objects and really get a sense of the connection uh, of the bodily nature of the pieces. Everybody I worked with feels a, a personal connection to the work. I had a lot of help and I, I talked to a lot of people during this process and I think I uh, made some kind of lasting relationships, friendships. Through the partnership with Art Gallery of Mississauga, the actual the outputs uh, and the, the, the documentation of the process becomes available to the entire community. So it's really such a great benefit to our students to see how a community of practice is really outside of the walls of just Sheridan. It's now within the, the reach of the public sphere. Making an, an, an indigenous presence visible in that space was an important part of the work. Um, and I also hope that people can uh, maybe view public space a little bit differently.